Okay, so we left off on the ball chisel, and today we're going to make a cutting chisel. So we're going to start by just writing a basic module for a square chisel. Um, this is going to be slightly different than the chisels that were made earlier in the demonstration because uh, the origins are all going to change. Um, math is a little different, but it's a good practice. So we're going to start out with a cube. Right, and uh, you can pass it information in X and Y and in Z, but for all intents and purposes, if we're making a square, we're going to find out that X and Y are both defined by width in this case, okay. and Z is going to be our length. So rather than have diameter, we're going to use width, um, because it's not really an accurate way to describe a square. And so we're going to pass that information like so. And then we're going to see if uh, our function works. So chisel square. There we go. And let's pass it the same information as before. We've got 15 and 100. And it's mad about a command. There we go. All right, so one of the interesting things is you can look at the object, right? And um, because the square is starting from the origin, right, and our cylinder starts at the center of the origin, obviously they're offset. So there are two ways to fix this. You can do center equals true, and then center the two objects on each other. But then the problem you have, right, is when you, um, let's just ghost this. When you do center equals true, now your square is um, centered at the origin in all three axes. And for the intent and purpose of what we're trying to accomplish, uh, it would be better if it was all starting on a singular face, so starting at the top of the origin. So the other fix is to eliminate center equals true, or declare it as center equals false, and then just use the translate function. move it backwards um, width over 2, right? So we got to offset everything width over 2. And then we just want to make sure that we went the right distance. So right now um, we're centered on one axis, but we're not centered on the other, which tells me one of these wasn't negative. So now you can easily check that by ghosting our current chisel. And you can see that they're, again, circumscribed within each other. The circle fits within the square, but now they're starting at uh, Z0 for the object orientation. And that's going to make our life easier. So we're just going to comment out inverted ball and, again, compile and render. We're doing this uh, with... Uh, function 5 or control 5, whatever it is that works for your computer. So at this point, now we need to make a new module, and that's called chisel cutter. And then we're going to pass it information from chisel square. And that's going to be our base. Make sure you have the curly braces correct. And then we're going to pass that same information that was there, width and length, into both of the arrays. Again, making sure that everything is spelled correctly. And uh, before we get confused, we're going to comment out our chisel square just to make sure that when we call chisel cutter, the object is in fact there. So chisel cutter. And we're going to pass 15 and 100. Right, so that's our width and our length. And that to be a semicolon. There we go. So now we can start doing some modifications here. So let's make a cube. And this time we're going to do um, width. 
and width over 2, right? Uh, we're going to have something half the size, but we're going to keep the length the same, just, just so we don't have to really track anything else down. So let's see what we've got. Oh, syntax error, missing a square bracket. It's much easier to check along as we go. So now here we have this weird lump sticking out of our queue. So let's let's take a look at what this new object is doing. Okay. So we're starting at the origin and growing out again. So obviously, uh, if we're trying to get this um, red rectangular section within the square section, we're going to have to move it back. So that's going to involve the translate function again. And we're probably going to need to go back in X, but you never know. There we go. So now we have a block, and we can cut away from our block to make a cutter chisel. So we're going to use a new function for rotate. There we go. And I think we're going to rotate uh, in X. So we've introduced a new variable called angle, which means we need to write that in there and then tell the module what that variable is going to be. So you don't want to write angle, you want to write the angle that you want. And so now we have our rectangle rotated, but what we want is to be cutting this section away. So as we look at this point, we actually want it to be rotating in the opposite direction. So we're just going to take angle and switch it to a negative. Okay. So now we can start testing out our chisel. And we're going to make a difference function. There we go. And close it out with the curly brace. So let's take a look at what we think we've done. So you can see there, there again is that sort of dotted green yellow line of mathematical unsolvable. So what we should do to make the processing easier is just add two millimeters to our width so we know it's much larger. And uh, if we do that, you're going to see we end up with one side that's still unsolvable. So we're going to want to move our translational width back one to clear that out. So there we go. We've got a nice clean cut. And it's behaving the way we want, which is good. So now we'd like to do it again, but on the other side. So we're going to take this, we're just going to copy paste it. And now all we have to do, in theory, is switch the angles. And let's, let's take a look at what we think we're doing here. All right, so we've switched the angles. But now we have this other problem of that we're nowhere near where we want to be. So this maybe needs to be negative still. OK. So now it's close to where we want it to be, but it's no longer affecting the region the way the other side is, right? So what we would hope is that both of these are happening and mirrored across the x plane, right? That's where we're doing all of our angles. So in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to engage in the mirror function. And the mirror function is a little tricky. Um, when you go to use it, uh, just like any other function, it's going to pass um, three variables for x, y, and z, trying to figure out which axes you want to mirror on. And you'll find that um, depending on how you choose to do it, it's going to do something different each time. So now it's back in the same plane. And if we move it down in the hierarchy, down to our cube, where we're rotating our cube around the Y plane, all of a sudden we get the behavior we want, right? So you want to make sure that um, you make sure that your mirror function is where you want. And if you get confused, it's OK. You've got three axes. It's a lot of variables. But just take your time to make sure that everything's behaving the way you want. So now, um, the thing is, we've called this angle, and we said it's 30 degrees. But in all honesty, if you look at the math, um, let's put in 90 degrees and see what we get. OK. So now our chisel has a 90 degree angle, and uh, that's not actually true, because we want this angle right here 
from here to here to be 90 degrees. And uh, what we have is 180, which tells us that our angle should actually be over 2 to pass our information correctly and get, you know, a nice block chisel. So there we go. That's a 90 degree. And that would make this a proper 30. It's a little steep, but it works out just fine. And that's all you need to know for the cutter chisel.